All right, hello, and welcome back to the Broken Business Models Podcast. We are your hosts, Ryan and James. And before we get into today's podcast, just a quick disclaimer, nothing in this podcast or any of our other materials should be taken as investment advice. James or I could have positions in any of the stocks that we may mention in this podcast, and we reserve the right to change those positions at any time. So make sure to always do your own work and consult with a professional uh, before making any investment decision. With that being said, the topic of today's podcast is going to be quantum computing, which, as you may know, is kind of the talk of the town in the investing community over the past few days. So we've talked about quantum computing, the quantum computing space before on this podcast, but um, in the past couple of months, and especially in the past uh, couple of weeks, the entire quantum computing space has had a pretty incredible rally with some of the pure play quantum computing stocks like uh, D-Wave, IonQ, and others, and uh, and quantum computing, potentially one the most obviously quantum-related stock in the entire market, up as much as 10 times. And in the past just couple of weeks, there's even more fuel added to, added to the fire when Google's quantum computing efforts uh, were able to reach a breakthrough that they announced um, for their Willow quantum computer. And that led to an incredible amount of investor hype and media attention. So what was this breakthrough that Google most recently uh, announced that caused the most recent uh, leg higher in this quantum computing surge? So Google came out with a press release that claimed that they have a new quantum computing chip called their Willow chip that paves the way to a useful large-scale quantum computer. Uh, Google CEO Sundar Pichai also put out a tweet uh, highlighting that this chip solved a standard computation in less than five minutes that would take a leading supercomputer uh, longer than the known age of the universe uh, to simulate. So obviously this sounds really, really, really good. And you can see how uh, it would be very, very exciting for anyone who's potentially interested in quantum computing. But what does this breakthrough, this, um, this new computation that they were able to achieve really mean? So this standard computation that the Google CEO was talking about is something called random circuit sampling. And you know, this is quantum computing, so it's very, very technical, very scientific stuff. But the basic gist of it is, is that it's basically sampling random numbers from a probability distribution modeling quantum states or quantum computers. So basically, it's just sampling random, random numbers from a quantum computer. And it's able to do that in a way that's much faster than a standard computer would be able to do on its own. Uh, So obviously nothing on its face, nothing remotely practical about this this breakthrough. On top of that, um, the claims of quantum computing being on the cusp of leading to practical use cases is nothing new. So on the bottom left here, I have a recent article from Forbes talking about why Google's Willow chip is such a game changer. And to the right, I have another headline that looks very similar in style from 15 years ago, also talking about how quantum computing may actually be on on a cusp. So quantum computing basically has been on a cusp of being breakthrough from a practical perspective for decades now. So with that background, uh, I'll hand it over to you, James, to talk about what specifically is going on with some of these stocks that have been affected by this recent wave? Yes, so I think of the of the stocks that Ryan mentioned previously of the pure play quantum computing stocks, the most obvious one is Quantum Computing Inc. Uh, with the ticker symbol QUBT. Uh, this company is obviously related to quantum computing because that's literally its name is Quantum Computing Inc. Now, as of November 6th, like right before the election, Quantum Computing Inc. was a penny stock that was on the brink of bankruptcy. After all the hype around quantum computing started to gain traction, and especially since the Google's Willow chip announcement caused a lot of hype around quantum computing, Quantum Computing Inc. has seen its share price surge almost 20 times over the past month. And it now has a market capitalization in excess of $2 billion. So what exactly is this Quantum Computing Inc. and uh, why have investors gotten so excited about it? 
Well, let's look at a bit of the history. Quantum Computing Inc. went public in 2018 via a reverse merger with a bankrupt penny stock. So what happened was they find some existing company uh, that goes bankrupt, and but it's still but its stock is still traded on the exchange, and you can acquire. But it's obviously has a very low valuation because the company's already bankrupt. You acquire that company, and the primary reason that you acquire it is so that you can gain its um, its listing on the stock exchange. And that's called a reverse merger. You acquire a bankrupt, basically shell company, just to get the exchange just to get their listing on the New York Stock Exchange. And then you have uh, you change the name of the company to Quantum Computing Inc. and claim to be developing a quantum computer. So that's what this company, Quantum Computing Inc., that's how they were able to list their shares um, on the New York Stock Exchange with um, via a reverse merger. This happened back in 2018. So what exactly does the company do? They their original business idea was to develop software for quantum computers. So at first they were not developing their own quantum computers. There are other companies developing quantum computers. Quantum Computing Inc. would make software that would run on third-party quantum computers. The problem is that there are no useful applications for quantum computers today. Basically today's quantum computers, they're just science experiments. They're not actually doing anything useful. Therefore, there's not really a big market to sell quantum software because the quantum computers are at such an early stage. So no one's really going to buy um, your software for it. And that's basically what happened. Their quantum software was a commercial failure. In the entire year of 2021, Quantum Computing Inc. generated zero revenue. They were not able to sell their software to anybody. So their attempt to develop quantum computing software was a complete and total failure. So in 2022, they pivoted the business by acquiring another company called QPhoton. And QPhoton was a tiny uh, pre-revenue development stage company that was working on uh, quantum photonic technology. So this Q, um, QPhoton was a startup that was trying to develop its own quantum computers. Quantum Computing Inc. acquires QPhoton in 2022. And then they say they're going to use QPhotons technology to start building their own quantum computers. And they claim to be working on what they call a foundry in Tempe, Arizona, where they're going to do, where they're going to manufacture these uh, quantum computers based on QPhotons technology. So how has this um, foundry in Tempe, Arizona been going? So they've posted one picture on their Twitter showing the inside of their foundry. Uh, this was in October of 2024, so just a couple months ago. And they show a picture of one room from inside the foundry. But all you can see is one room um, with some equipment inside of it. It doesn't really look like, you know, some big, massive, uh, you know, some big, massive building that's going to be, you know, building a huge number of quantum computers. It basically just looks like one room with some equipment in it. And there is a short selling publication called Iceberg Research. Iceberg Research sends an investigator to the address of um, Quantum Computing Inc.'s foundry in Arizona. And this is how it looks from the outside. It just looks like kind of a regular office building. It's not, you know, if you see pictures of real foundries owned by like Intel or TSMC or whatever, there's these massive sprawling um, sprawling complexes with giant warehouses and giant buildings where uh, Quantum Computing Inc., their so-called foundry, where they claim to be manufacturing their quantum computers, actually looks pretty tiny. It's just in an office building, and they've only shown this one picture of one room with some equipment in it. So the foundry does not look to be all that impressive, at least as of now. Now, as um, I explained previously, Quantum Computing Inc.'s stock price has surged massively over the past uh, month or so. Now, I do not believe that this rally in the stock price has anything to do with the fundamentals of, quantum, of the company because they haven't really announced much of anything significant during this period. It's mostly just the general investor euphoria and excitement about quantum computing 
which is why the stock price has surged so much. Now, the only thing that the company announced that could be viewed as positive um, is on December 17th, Quantum Computing Inc. announced that it was awarded a contract by NASA to support phase unwrapping using Dirac 3 Photonic Optimization Solver. So this Dirac 3 Photonic Optimization Solver is one of the uh, quantum-related devices or equipment that they claim to be manufacturing. And they say now they have a contract with NASA. They do not disclose the terms of the contract or how much money they could actually get from NASA. But you know this was obviously viewed as very positive by a lot of investors that they got a contract from NASA. But it's important to put this into contact into context because Quantum Computing Inc. has been claiming to have contracts with NASA since at least July of 2023. So here's you know a press release from last year where they say that they just received a NASA subcontract in July of 2023. So for you know more than a year, they claim that they've had these contracts with NASA. Yet despite supposedly having these contracts with NASA, the company has generated minuscule revenue. In the first nine months of 2024, they have generated $310,000 of total revenue. So obviously, whatever contracts they have with NASA are pretty tiny. And I don't see any reason to expect anything different from this new contract that they just announced. And just because NASA you know, gives you some contract that is not a vindication of your technology. All it is, you know, NASA has a massive research budget and they can spend a few thousand dollars, um, you know, trying to do various experimentations and trying to tinker around with new technology. And maybe they looked at what, you know, something that Quantum Computing Inc. was developing. It's like, oh, maybe we want to buy one just to do some testing and experimentation on it. It's such a small amount of money. It's not like NASA did some massive due diligence process to confirm that um, Quantum Computing Inc.'s technology is actually legit because it's probably not given the fact that they generate such a minuscule amount of money, uh, such a minuscule amount of revenue. Now, Quantum Computing Inc. has incurred operating losses since its inception in 2018. They have historically relied on dilutive equity raises to fund their operating losses. Prior to the recent rally we've seen in Quantum Computing Inc.'s share price, the company was on the brink of bankruptcy. As of September, thir um, as of September 30th, 2024, they had approximately $3 million of cash on their balance sheet. The company burns approximately $5 million per quarter. So they had less than one quarter's worth of cash left on their balance sheet as of the end of the third quarter. And we can see over the past couple of years, their share count has increased massively as they issued new shares to fund, um, to fund their losses. Yet despite issuing so many shares, their cash balance was actually decreasing because they were burning money faster than they could raise it. And as the share price was declining, it looked like the company was probably heading towards bankruptcy. Of course, this all changed over the past month with the monster rally we've seen in the company's share price. And the company wasted very little time to take advantage of this. On December 10th, they announced a $50 million stock offering. And the only reason they were able to raise $50 million by issuing new shares is because the share price has increased so much um, and this will you know, making it easier for them to raise money. And this will give them, you know, a couple more years worth of cash burn, but it does not change any of the fundamentals of the company. You know, this is a company that went public via a reverse merger, which is always a red flag. They claim to be developing some quantum software, complete and total failure. Then they start claiming they're developing their own uh, quantum photonic chips. And they have this tiny, uh, they have this tiny foundry in Arizona, which looks like it's just, you know, in what we've only seen one room. And it looks tiny and they have supposedly have these contracts with NASA, but they generate, you know, just a few hundred thousand dollars of revenue. So this is the definition, you know, this is a, um, what you would call a shit co, you know, they're just hopping from one stock promotion to the next, trying to get people to buy their stock. Now they got lucky with the recent quantum rally 
which allowed them to raise more capital, but that doesn't change the fundamentals of the business. And I'll give you an even clearer example of how ridiculous this whole quantum mania has become. So this is a different company. Previously, we were talking about Quantum Computing Inc. Now we're talking about a different company called Quantum Corp. Now, Quantum Corp, as of November 20th, was a near bankrupt penny stock, yet it's seen its share price surge from $3 all the way up to $46. And obviously, the reason why the stock price has increased so much is because the name of the company is Quantum Corp. So many naive and novice investors see that the name is Quantum Corp and assume that it somehow is related to quantum computing. As it turns out, the Quantum Corp has nothing to do with quantum computing. They actually are a software company that makes software uh, for, um, for storing video files. It has absolutely nothing to do with quantum mechanics or quantum computing. They just chose the name Quantum Corp because they thought it sounded cool. This company has literally zero, zero to do with quantum computing. Despite this, you know, investors are so dumb that they just started buying the stock because it has quantum in the name. And they, you know, people get FOMO and want to invest in anything quantum related. So this really shows the extent of the uh, stupidity in the markets right now. And, um, you know, these stocks can go up a lot uh, as investors get FOMO and want to invest into the quantum theme. But as, as soon as the share prices start increasing, these companies will take advantage of that by issuing new shares to raise capital. And, you know, as the share counts, um, as these new shares hit the market, I expect, um, I expect these stock prices to be uh, crushed like souffles under sledgehammers as these companies issue new shares. And that will eventually put downward pressure on the stock price because these equity raises are diluted. So I think that about wrapped up everything we had to talk about, um, everything we had to talk in today's video. If anybody in the audience um, has any thoughts or opinions about quantum computing, please let us know in the comments section below, and we will see you all on next week's video.